Hey, what's up? This is Christopher back with another video. Today we're going to look at Luminar from MacFun. Now, Luminar is a Mac OS application. It only costs $69. You can go to macfun.com slash Luminar. I'll have a link in the description if you want to read more about it other than what I'm going to do in this video. Basically, in this video, I'm just going to show you some of the features of it, and I'm going to edit an image while I talk about some of the features that Luminar has. Speaking of which, Luminar comes with over 300 tools and features that you can use to post-process your photography, your artwork, or whatever. Um, it has support for over a dozen different cameras from DSLR, mirrorless, point-and-shoot, GoPro, phone, drone, I mean the whole lineup. Anything you're using to take images or photos with, it's going to support it more or less. Now, Luminar is a professional photo app. As I mentioned, it's basically a digital dark room on your Mac. It has a cool feature where you could use Luminar as an extension for Apple Photos. So if you are using photos on your Mac to like manage your images or your photos, then you could use Mac Fun to edit them. So every Mac user knows, like you can't really edit your photos in photos on the Mac. It's very limited, the feature set that you have. So using an app like Luminar to do so is, it's, it's awesome or whatever, because you can use photos to manage all your digital, digital photography, and then you could use Luminar to enhance them and just make them look wonderful. Uh, there's a bunch of presets that come with Luminar, but you can also purchase some additional ones. They have some on their website, but you could also download that are free. And I'll have a link in the description where you can grab those. They're not expensive. They're, I think the cheapest one is like $6. And then the most expensive one is $9.99. And then as I mentioned, there are some free ones that you can download as well. And I'll go over all that once I get into Luminar. So let's look at Luminar right now. Uh, one thing I want to mention too, Luminar, you can, it supports up to five Macs. So if you have multiple Macs like I do, I have two iMacs, a MacBook Air and a MacBook Pro, which I'm actually recording this video on right now. You can install it on up to five Macs. Um, another cool thing I wanted to mention before I get started with this, if you have the new MacBook Pro, which I do, Luminar has the touch bar support for it. So you can come in here and look, I'm using the touch bar right now. Like add the filters, you know, I can hide stuff. I'm actually touching my touch bar right now you know I can review like uh, before and after or whatever so I just wanted to mention that as well so let's look at Luminar right here uh, so up here at the top you can click the let's go in full screen mode so up here at the top you can click the folder to import your images you could also batch process images so if you want to import multiple images, you could do that you could share to different social media sites right from the application and those include like smug mug Flickr Facebook, Twitter, 500px, you could also uh, email or share via messages, or you could just export your image to your desktop. So let's look down here at the bottom. So this is where you have the presets. So this is a user preset that I've saved, but over here you have all presets. You have your favorites. And let me go to the all presets again and just show you. So I have three additional presets that do not come with Luminar, and those are the Noble Monochromatic preset, the Insta, inspiration and the essentials the ones you are going to get are basic street outdoor travel portrait and dramatic and then if you want to download or purchase other presets you just click the more button and it's going to take you right it's going to open up your browser and then take you right to the website where you can do that so really quick let's go ahead and let me look at my user one that i've created so i have this orange preset here so i'm gonna go ahead and just click this and you'll notice down here on the left it's processing and then there's my image cool thing you can do you can click the eye icon up here at the top and do the quick preview just hold on it and it's going to show you your original image and then it's going to show you your processed one you could also click right here and, and view a before and after and you can slide that from right to left that's pretty cool right there it's really nifty i love that feature so once you apply a preset, if you don't like the way this looks, you have a couple options right here. One, you can go ahead and adjust the amount. Maybe I want to bring that down. Maybe that's just a little too strong. So I put it on like 70% right here. I could also favorite it by clicking the star. And then you have a drop down here you could choose where you could update with current settings, rename it, show and find, or export it, or uh, delete if you want to do so. And I can turn this on or off up here in the layers panel. I can come over here on the right and just click the eye and it's going to deactivate that. Could also add another layer right here. I could add a new adjustment layer or a new image layer and also could create a new stamped layer. 
So you'll notice the little gear icon up here. I can click that and it's a drop down and I can show or hide the layer. I could rasterize it, duplicate it, rename it, create a preset based off what I've done right here so far. I can reset all filters, delete all filters. Uh, so you have your blend modes right here. You have normal, multiply, lighten, overlay, soft light, different hue, color, uh, etc. You got some mask if you want to enable or disable a mask, create a luminosity mask, a clear mask, invert, fill, um, and delete, and you could copy paste as well. You could merge all visible layers, merge all layers, and then you could create a new st uh, stamped layer as well. So let's look at editing some of what we have here on screen. So we have the RGB and the curves right here. You can see the red and the green and the blue. Let's bring the red down a little bit and adjust that. And you'll notice down here at the bottom you have your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. And you could adjust all that and come over here to the green. You know, I'm just doing this to show you. I'm not actually editing this. I just wanted to show you that once you start adjusting it, you'll notice that. And that looks sort of crazy right there. <laughs> and uh, with the curves, you can turn those on or off. You can click the little orange icon right here, and that will deactivate it. That's without it, and then that's with it. And then you have a drop down right here where you could reset the filter, delete the filter, change the blended mode. So let's go with soft light, see what this looks like right here. That looks much better right there than what I had originally. You could mask it, duplicate it, and then again. All right, so we can scroll down here to the color balance, and you have the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. So you could adjust these. You could have the split color warmth. You have a drop down here with different blended modes and mask once again. So you could do like warm colors or cool colors. You have your bicolor toning, and again, it has a drop down where you could add like different mask or blending modes. And then you can turn the tone and presets on or off, bottom color, top color, etc. I kind of like that. I just did the top color. It kind of adds a little bit of orange in the sky. Not so much like with the grass and the trees there with the bottom color. And then you can click right here on the color and adjust the color. So I can click here. Right now I have this orange. Maybe I want to make that a little bit darker. No, I kind of like it like it was. I can make it a little more red. But I kind of like that orange right there. Let's turn the bottom color on, and then I'm going to change that color a little bit. Let's go over here to the other spectrum. Let's look maybe, I don't want the greens. Maybe I'll come down here to the teal a little bit. Teal, a little too much there. Then I can adjust that and darken it just a little bit. It looks really nice. You have orientation. You could blend, shift, position. So we can transform or crop our image right here. So over here on the left, you see I have this building kind of in the way. So I'm going to go ahead and click the scissors tool right here. And I'm going to go ahead and crop that out. I want to get it right in between that and then the bucket right there. I'm going to bring this down just a little bit more. Actually, I want to get that sign out of here. And then I need to bring this up just a little bit. Let me scoot it back over just a tad, about like so. Go ahead and apply this. Now look at our image, much better right there. So on the side panel over here, you have your move tool, you have your masking brush, you're going to have right here, you're going to have your gradient mask mode, and then you're going to have your radial mask mode, and then you have the transform tool, and click that, and just show you that I could transform it, which I don't want to do don't want to transform it. You have your clone stamp tool, your eraser tool, and then last but not least, you're going to have your denoise tool. So let's go ahead and apply the denoise tool here, and let's see how this looks. Just prepping it. So you can see the, this is the after, and this is the before. So look at that. Look at the way it took all that blurriness out. Maybe I'll bring that down just a little bit. But that looks good. Let's go ahead and apply that. It's going to do some image processing right here. So it takes a few seconds for this. Like I said, it's a little bit slower than I like, but it's not. I mean, look, it's done. I mean, a few seconds. So I'm not really complaining. So these are non-destructive. I want to mention that as well. So your original image, you're not going to add any type of effect to it or, or anything like that. It's non-destructive, so the only thing you're doing is basically you like duplicated the image, and this is where you're applying your effects to. Your original image is still going to be intact on your you know, hard drive or wherever you've imported your imagery to. Uh, what's cool about it too, you can click the, the clock up here and view the history, and if you want to go back to anything that you've applied to your image, you can simply just click on it, and it'll immediately add it back um, 
to what it'll revise it to an original edit that you've made. You could also click right here, and what this does, this is the undo. So if you applied something and you want to undo it, you'll just click that little arrow, little back arrow icon, and then it'll undo whatever you've applied to your clip. So let's look at the histogram now. Let's go ahead and click this. You could hide that, and then you could hide the layers panel here as well. If you want to hide the side panel, just click that, and it's going to hide both of those. And then you could hide your presets down here. Now let's look at some of the presets that come with it. I'm going to go with the basic. And what I'm going to do, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to import another image. And let's go, let me find a good image to, let's look at this one right here. This was at Disney. This was shot with an iPhone, uh, I believe it was an iPhone 6S Plus. Let's look at some of the images down here. I'm going to apply this. Let's look at this one. Let's look at the black and white right there. Looks really good. So let's look at how about some of this dramatic ones right here. So what I want to do is I want to undo all those uh, presets that I've added. And we've got the dramatic right here. So let's look at this vintage look. That looks awesome. And then you could bring that down just a little bit. And then I could further adjust it. You know, I can come in here to the dramatic setting in here. And I can say the contrast or the brightness. I can bring the brightness up or down. Let's go with, I want to bring that up a little bit. And then you have your uh, like grain. So I could choose to remove some of that grain, just a little bit of it. Then you have your cross processing right here. You can do type London. Let's look at Miami, Chicago. You know what? We're going to go with Miami since this is Disney World in Florida. And it kind of added like a little purplish green tint to it, which looks really good. You could add an additional filter right here. So look at all the settings you have in here. You have adjustable gradient, uh, clarity, curves, dehaze, fog, high key, image radiance, microstructure, Orton effect. Uh, let's go with the Orton effect. And then we could add some, we're going to add the amount of that. Do some of the softness. Could bump that up a little bit. The brightness, just a little bit. Uh, saturation. Desaturate that just a tad, maybe add a little contrast to it. But you get the idea right here. You have total control over your image. This is so much more advanced than the Photos application that comes on your Mac. You could also do like blend mode layers. So if I want to add like an additional layer right here, so let's go ahead and add a new adjustment layer. And let's look at the mood enhancement. And let's bring that down just a little bit. But look, you have layer zero right here. And I can go ahead and uncheck mark that, the original, apply this one and apply the second one. Just total control over your image. You know, you can just totally just take control of your of your work, of your photography, and make it your own and make it unique and get get your imagery ready for uploading to Instagram or wherever you plan on sharing you know, your photography at for using 500px or Flickr, or Google Photos, or, you know, Twitter, or Facebook, whatever it is, you know, take them into an application like this and boost them, enhance them, make them look good. You know, you can crop things out that you don't need in your photo, like how I just did this other image right here. You know, I cut those two little things. I actually need to do it a little bit further right here because I notice I have something over here on the right sticking out. Let's go ahead and do that just like that. Boom. I've cut this Coca-Cola sign out and I cut the little board that was sticking out when I took the photo that I didn't see. And this is night photography right here. And it looks really cool. You got the stars in the background. You got the ski buckets going up or the gondola, you know, taking off, whatever. Really cool photo right here. And then I can take this image and share it, you know, to Instagram, wherever I want to share it to or whatever. And it looks so much better than the original image. Let's look at the, that's the original right there without the uh, crop, and then, you know, just, just with the presets on here. But look at that. just looks so nice or whatever, nice and professional or whatever. But this is Luminar for the Mac. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those down below. And please check the descriptions for all the relevant links that go with Luminar. I'm going to have links to where you can purchase the application, uh, the presets, 
Uh, MacFun has a, a bunch of different tutorials on how to use Luminar. I'm going to go ahead and link to that as well. And if you have any questions or comments, like I mentioned, leave those below. Give the video a thumbs up. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Peace.